good day and very cold day to you. My name is Paul and welcome to my channel Mexico a la Cat. Today we are still exploring the downtown area of Monterrey, Nuevo Leon. Now something to note, from the previous video you saw it was a very summery, very sunny day and today is very cloudy. The weather changes quite a bit. We have a cold front coming from the, uh, from the states which is causing this to be a little bit chilly today. That's the reason why I have this sweater. But I need to worry, we're still gonna show you around. Next to the government palace, we find the Macro Plaza or Grand Plaza. This is the name given to the Central Park of Monterrey, which occupies 40 hectares. It is the fifth largest plaza in the world. Around this plaza, you will find government buildings, shops, the station of the metro, and lots of green areas along the old monuments and colonial buildings that contrast with the new buildings. The plaza was built in the 80s as an initiative of the governor, Alfonso Martinez Dominguez. It is divided into two sections. The first, it is in charge of the municipality of Monterrey, and the second section is in charge of the state government. The construction of the macro plaza caused the demolition of many buildings, and the relocation of 283 families and 310 businesses, among which was the famous Elizondo Cinema. In this macro plaza, we can find the Fountain of Neptune as well as other notable works of art, such as Luis Barragans as well. Now what we can find behind me is an architectural work by Luis Barragan, which is called the Commerce Beacon or El Faro Comercial. It is to commemorate basically just the commerce of the city and how industrialized this city has become. But just look at the size of this thing. It's huge. El Faro del Comercio is an emblematic building of the city located in the Macro Plaza. Its dimensions are 70 meters in height and 12 meters in width, being one of the most visited points in the Macro Plaza. So let's continue exploring the rest of what we can find in the Macro Plaza. So we have arrived to the main plaza, which is in front of the municipal palace of the city of Monterrey. There's a bit of traffic going around, that's why you hear a lot of noise from the cars, as you can see here in the back. Now, behind me is the statue of Ignacio Zaragoza, who was a general and who lived in this area, and who also married a lady from Monterrey. Their love story is really beautiful, and let me tell you more about it. This love story begins with the birth of Ignacio Zaragoza Seguin on March 24th, 1829, in the town of Bahia del Espiritu Santo in the state of Coahuila. He was a calm child, but very intelligent. In 1844, he moved to the city of Monterrey, where he entered the seminary school, which he later abandoned in 1846, convinced that he had no priestly vocation. He joined the armed forces and moved up in the ranks to become a general. He is famously known as a great general and as the hero of the Battle of Puebla when the French invaded the country. His wife, Rafaela Padilla de la Garza, was born in the Villa de San Nicolás Hidalgo, Nuevo León, on October 30th, 1836. Little is known about Rafaela's life, but what is known is that she was orphaned at an early age, being cared for by her brother, Marcelino Padilla, who was a friend of General Ignacio Zaragoza. In 1856, there was a brief time of relative peace in the country, so General Ignacio Zaragoza began to frequent the house of his friend, Marcelino Padilla, in the city of Monterrey. On one of those visits, he discovered a photograph of a beautiful woman with fair, pale skin, brown hair, upturned nose, and honey-colored eyes. The young woman was the sister of the general's friend. Zaragoza begged his friend to introduce him to such a beautiful woman, and he agreed. After a short time of courtship, they both fell in love, and the general asked the young woman for her hand. With the permission of its immediate chief and Rafaela's brother, 
Zaragoza set the date for the wedding to be January 21st, 1857, in the Cathedral of Monterrey. Unfortunately for the bride's misfortune, on January 1st, 1857, the conservative general Tomás Mejía began an uprising in San Luis Potosí at the English consulate stealing money. General Zaragoza was commissioned to quell the rebellion and this prevented him from attending his own wedding and instead sent his brother Miguel as his representative. The bride wept bitterly during the event when she could not count on the presence of her future husband and it is stated that during the ceremony held by the priest, he was wrong to name Miguel Zaragoza as a boyfriend causing the refusal of the bride. She corrected the priest by telling him that she was not marrying Miguel, but Ignacio. So the priest changed the name and she accepted, thus finalizing the ceremony and becoming officially married. After the uprising, Zaragoza returned to Monterrey with his wife and they had three children, of which two of them died. The youngest, Rafaela, in honor of her mother, was born in June 1860 and lived until 1927. In December 1861, Rafaela Padilla was diagnosed with an incurable disease, the exact cause of which was not determined, the most likely being pneumonia. Her condition rapidly worsened and Rafaela passed away on January 13, 1862. Zaragoza, at the age of 33, died of murine typhus contracted by a lice infestation a consequence of the fatigue and the unhealthiness of the military campaigns. His remains were transferred to the capital and buried in the cemetery of San Fernando, located in Mexico City. A few years later, the city of Puebla recognized his efforts and Rafaela as the wife of the hero, and it was the will of the people that the Mexican government exhumed the remains of Rafaela and Ignacio and moved them to Puebla on May 5th, 1979 to reunite them and be together at last for eternity. Such a beautiful love story between these two personalities and the way that they ended is just tragic, you know? But that's how life is. Now we're gonna head to the Cathedral of Monterrey. Behind me you can see the Cathedral of Monterrey. Let's explore it. This is the main church which Diego de Montemayor placed in the main square of the city of Monterrey when he founded it. In the beginning, it was reduced to a humble mud hut, which, given its fragility and elemental construction, had to be rebuilt several times after frequent floods and fires that destroyed it. The formal construction of the religious building began approximately in 1635 and has a lovely design of Baroque and Neoclassical. In the interior, we have a simple design, but functional, with wooden seats that were carved by local artisans. There are murals in the main atrium of the church that bring a different feeling due to its bright colors. Painted by Ángel Zárraga, who was rejected by famous muralist painter Diego Rivera because of his faith, he is a renowned artist, not so much in Mexico, but in Europe, due to the studies and work he performed in that continent. He returned to Mexico when World War II began and it was when the Archbishop of Monterrey, Guillermo Trichler Cordoba, invited him to paint the murals in the cathedral between 1942 through 1945. He died on the 22nd of September of 1946 at the age of 60 and upon his death his work has been considered a universal gift for the world. Welcome to Plaza Hidalgo. In this plaza we have the story of a local criminal that did mischief and who also met his end in this same plaza. Agapito Treviño was considered the Robin Hood of Monterrey. He was born in 1829 in Los Remates State in Villa de Guadalupe, Nuevo León. At the age of 18 he was already known as a thief throughout the area and terrorized the wealthy in Monterrey. 
What made him so famous was his style of stealing. He will arrive riding a white horse and carrying a harmonica. When he caught his victims, he forced them to dance naked while he played a tune. He would later leave them tied up in the bush. Despite his peculiar sense of humor, he never killed anyone. In fact, he became loved by many people and was considered kind since he did not resort to violence when he robbed. At the end of the day, this legendary thief carried bags full of money and distributed parts of it with the poorest people, and the rest he hid in a cave named La Boca. In the year 1851, he was apprehended for the first time. He was sentenced to 10 years of forced labor in the quarries of the Hill of El Obispado, from which he escaped with everything and shackles on. He was captured a second time in 1853 and sentenced to another 10 years of forced labor, but somehow he managed to escape again and this time making a mockery of the local police force. He was captured for the third time in 1854 and was given a military court hearing, which later sentenced him to death. He met his end on July 24th in the Plaza del Mercado, today Plaza Hidalgo, when at the age of 25 was killed by a firing squad. But even in his last moments, it is reported that he sang with the bandage on his eyes, Goodbye, Monterrey. Goodbye, my friends. Forgive me if I have hurt you. According to legend, Agapito Treviño's fortune is still hidden in the cave. Some locals believe that the treasure is cursed and the person who finds it will go crazy. Others say that the people who have it and spend it on themselves will die. But until today, nothing has been found and therefore the great mystery of the legend of the cave of Agapito Treviño remains alive. Now we're going to head to a hotel in which Pancho Villa and his horse stayed when they captured the city of Monterrey. Let's go. The building behind me is Hotel Ancira. This is where Pancho Villa and his horse stay. Let's take a look at the lobby. Hotel Ancira is one of the most beautiful hotels in Monterrey and was the dream of Fernando Ancira. Welcome to Hotel Ancira. This is definitely a gorgeous place to come and visit. Eat here and just you know, stay around in the lobby. It opened on July 26, 1912, and the name of the hotel was Grand Hotel Monterrey. It was designed in Paris, France, by architects Henri Sauvage and Charles Sarrazin. The exterior of the building is made of quarry from Los Ramones, Nuevo León. It had a good run for its early years, and due to the constant occupations of the revolutionaries, it had to be intervened on several occasions to retain its beauty. Either way, it is an amazing building and its lobby is filled with white marble from Carrara, Italy. Some of the most distinguished visitors of the Ancira Hotel are Maria Felix, Agustin Lara, Octavio Paz, Rufino Tamayo, Leonora Carrington, King of Belgium, Albert II, Hugo Chavez, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, David Copperfield, Marcel Marceau, and former President of the United States, Lyndon B. Johnson. On March 13, 1915, General Francisco Villa visited Monterrey. His intention was to raise a large sum of money to continue financing his armed struggle, and for this, he will resort to the Monterrey businessman. Pancho Villa stayed in the hotel with his horse and it is recorded that he will always enter with his horse to the lobby and leave it there. Some chronicles mention that at one point in his stay, Pancho Villa also fired shots inside the hotel and that these impacts still remain on the walls. Now that we learn a little bit of the history of this beautiful hotel, let's head to our last stop, which is Barrio Antiguo. have arrived to Barrio Antiguo. It is very lonely in the morning or during the day, 
But what they tell me is that it becomes very lively at night as most of these places are bars and clubs. This is one of the oldest sectors of Monterrey, which dates back to the 18th century. In that area are located different buildings that have been the seat of regional power since the new kingdom of Leon. It used to be the commercial and cultural heart of the city from the time of the Viceroyalty and until recent times during the first half of the 20th century. From the middle of the last century, people lived in modern lifestyle, characterized by the construction of hotels, museums, bars, discos, and restaurants with international cuisine. During the last decade of the 20th century and the first decade of the 21st century, the Barrio Antiguo was well known as the center of Monterrey's nightlife. Since 2013, the government changed the way the old town was considered. A restoration project has started since then, which seeks to build a space for cultural recreation and preservation of the historical heritage. Through the closure of some of its now pedestrianized streets, and the reactivation of businesses. I hope you liked this video and got to learn a little bit more of the history of Monterrey and its random boroughs. Now, in the next episode, we'll explore the magical town of Santiago and visit Cola de Caballo. See you later.